so you may have heard if you've been on the internet if you've been paying attention to the olympics at all that there is currently a controversy going on over an algerian boxer a main caliph who is i cannot stress this enough a cis woman a man was born with cis genitalia by all accounts she is able to have children she was raised based on her assigned gender at birth she has always been always presented as a woman yet because she has a rare genetic condition where she technically has xy chromosomes she is now being lambasted as being a man would you believe it from some of the dumbest people on earth so i want to go into this a little bit to explain how this has all happened and how so many people are buying into what was essentially russian propaganda well we'll get to that in a bit but for now let's go over the actual story The International Olympic Committee confirmed Amain Khalif is eligible to compete in women's boxing at the Paris Games. She went viral on social media after winning her opening bout Thursday against Italy's Angela Carini, who stopped fighting after 46 seconds. Khalif, along with Taiwanese boxer Lin Yuting, were both disqualified from their championships in 2023 after the IBA said they failed gender eligibility testing, a move that the IOC has called a sudden and arbitrary decision. The two boxers also competed in the 2021 Tokyo Games, but did not medal. The IOC is committed to protecting the human rights of all athletes participating in the Olympic Games, the organization said in a statement. The IOC is saddened by the abuse that the two athletes are currently receiving. Now, here's here's the, the important part, because I've already seen, when I announced this stream, I already saw people in my comment section getting over this. Khalif reportedly has differences of sexual development known as DSDs, the organization said in a fact sheet released Friday. Having DSD is not the same as being transgender. Differences in sex development is a set of rare conditions involving genes, hormones, and reproductive organs that can cause the sexual development of a person to be different than others. Sometimes this can lead to a person having XY chromosomes, but develop otherwise female. The IBA, long mired with scandal and controversy, oversaw Olympic boxing before being stripped of its right before the Tokyo Games and is no longer recognized in the International Federation of Boxing. In the face of backlash over Khalif's 2024 win, the IBA stood by its decision to, dis to disqualify the two boxers over two untrustworthy and independent tests, though they did not disclose what the tests were. The Washington Post reported IBA president claimed they were disqualified over finding XY chromosomes. The IOC said the gender and age for the athletes is based on their passports. The Paris Games are the first in history to reach gender parity. Trans inclusion has had no negative effect on gender parity at the Olympics, according to GLAAD and Interact. Also, IOC guidelines state athletes should not be excluded from competing due to alleged unfair advantage based on sex variations, according to GLAAD. From NBC. At the boxing event last year, the athletes failed to meet gender eligibility tests at the Women's World Boxing Championships in New Delhi by the IBA. They were both disqualified after sporting officials said they failed an unspecified test because they allegedly had male chromosomes. The IBA, whose president is Umar Kremlev of Russia and is an associate of Vladimir Putin, claimed the fighters had failed unspecified eligibility tests. The decision came shortly after Khalif beat Russian boxer Azalea Aminiva, who was previously undefeated. The IBA's legitimacy has been called into question, with USA Boxing terminating its relationship with that body last year, citing the, quote, ongoing failures of IBA leadership. The sequence of events is as follows. The IBA has been pretty much the number one propagandist pushing the idea that she's transgender. All of these conservatives latched on to these ideas. And the IBA not only has ulterior motives, but has been called out for failing leadership. There's a reason why it is not a trusted authority anymore. And it has the ulterior motive of this specific boxer being the one who unseated a previously undefeated Russian boxer. Algeria, the country uh, Khalif fights for, has no protections for discriminated categories of LGBTQ people. LGBT rights in Algeria 
Changing gender, illegal. Discrimination, no protections. Housing discrimination, no protections. Illegal to be in the military. Intersex infant surgery, not banned. Employment discrimination, no protections. Gender affirming care, banned. Gay marriage, banned. Homosexuality, illegal. Imprisonment as punishment. So, not only is this entire conspiracy being driven by an untrustworthy source with an axe to grind that many other sources have labeled as untrustworthy, but it pertains to a cis woman who's being accused of being transgender, who would be representing a country where not only is it illegal to change genders, but homosexuality is punishable by imprisonment. When the outrage to public decency has consisted of an act against nature with an individual of the same sex, the penalty is imprisonment of between six months and three years. Vigilante executions, beatings, and torture are also allowed with police joining in on the attacks, being complicit or turning a blind eye. The criminal's laws originate from the prevailing moors in Algeria that view homosexuality and cross-dressing as against the Islamic faith. The law does not recognize or respect the civil rights of LGBT persons. There are no gay-friendly establishments and no political organization is allowed to campaign for LGBT rights. That's the country that conservatives think put forward a trans woman to represent them on the world stage. Like that, that's the, that's, that's what they decided on. That's what they landed on. One of the first ones I saw complain about this is professional loser Riley Gaines, who, if you'll remember, we've talked about before, uh, lost to, I believe, Leah Thomas and has just made it her personality ever since to yell at trans women in sports. Men don't belong in women's sports. Let's get it trending. Sad reality. Yes, that is, this is, this is the reality. This is exactly what this woman looks like. Unfucking believable Unfucking believable um, So here was, going back to our favorite mold-brained uh, billionaire. Jowling, cowling, rowling. Could any picture sum up our new men's rights movement better? The smirk of a male who knows he's protected by a misogynist sporting establishment enjoying the distress of a woman he's just punched in the head and whose life's ambition he just shattered. Now, for a moment, I want you to consider if the sexes were reversed on this. They wouldn't be the same at all in any way. At all. Right? I know this because if you look at Michael Phelps, genetic abnormalities are not excluded from sports. They shouldn't be. If you are competing and you have a natural advantage, that is what competition is for. It is not meant to be this completely equalitarian playing field, egalitarian, sorry. The idea that you, you just, if somebody has a natural advantage, if somebody has more testosterone, which is something that uh, plenty of other athletes have had, uh, mostly female ones, have had issues with. I, I, it's ridiculous. Like they don't do the same thing for male athletes. And obviously there are plenty of cis women who have higher rates of testosterone, different bone density, different chromosomal structure. People who are still born women have gone through their entire lives as women. By every definition TERFs want to have, every gender critical person 
When they say, oh, you're not a woman, you'll never be able to, to have a period or have a child when they're talking to trans women. This woman has that, has always had that, has lived life as a woman, and now she is facing legitimately misogynistic discrimination. And the gender criticals are fucking gone. Uh, Irish DC 95, just making sure, are we all aware that Angela Carini never actually accused her of being trans? Yes, it, uh, this this was not on Angela Carini, I do want to say. Uh, that came out, like, uh, the onus for all of this is firmly on the assholes who came out to turn this into a trans issue, an anti-trans issue. Uh, won't, won't surprise you to know that includes professional dipshit Logan Paul. Those on the political right were quick to jump to Karini's defense, claiming that Khalif was actually a biological man and should not have been able to compete. Again, it's literally illegal in Algeria. Cross-dressing is literally illegal in Algeria. Being transgender, being publicly homosexual. Yet they think Algeria is going to put forward a trans woman. Yeah, no, Kobold, there are zero trans athletes this year, so they, they invented one. Yeah, they had to they had to invent one. Like that's that's literally <laughs> like trans issues are are one of the biggest things for conservatives right now. And when there are no trans athletes, they had to fucking make one up, like straight up. Their misunderstanding stems from the fact that Khalif was abruptly disqualified by the IBA last year after failing to meet an unspecified gender test. I'm super curious about what that was. Super curious. Khalif was born with a birth defect called Swire syndrome, a condition that precludes the development of ovaries and leads to an elevated level of testosterone, in addition to chromosomal abnormalities. But Khalif is still a woman. She is classified as such on her Algerian passport and by the IOC. WWE star Logan Paul was quick to throw his hat in the ring and share his thoughts on the matter. In a now-deleted post, Paul referred to Khalif's participation as the purest form of evil, claiming that a man was allowed to beat up a woman on a global stage. Other celebrities, such as J.K. Rowling and Elon Musk, co-signed Logan Paul's claim. This led to a widespread smear campaign against Khalif and further muddied the truth of the matter. Here's the thing. Um, Khalif actually came out and said that she will be pursuing legal action against the people who started the hate campaign, and I really fucking hope. I really hope. Like it's, it's very easy, very easy to link people like JK Rowling and Elon Musk to the harassment she's received. Boston Globe offers lengthy contraction of factually inaccurate Amain Khalif headline amid Olympic gender controversy. Transgender boxer advances, it read. However, on Saturday, the Globe issued a statement in which it apologized for the inaccurate nature of the headline. Quote, a significant error was made in the headline on a story in Friday's print sports section about Algerian boxer Amin Khalif incorrectly describing her as transgender. Additionally, our initial correction of this error neglected to note she was born female. So, they had to correct it twice. Fantastic. Awesome. So smart. Second thing, um, you'll notice Logan Paul has also walked back to his his claim like they've they've walked it back after a few hours of trying people trying to correct logan paul he posted a follow-up that only made the situation worse he took down his original post but stood by the sentiment he expressed he took his claim even further pointing out khalif's controversial disqualification by the iba without giving the context of her birth defect although she's been previously disqualified for failing a gender test and has xy chromosomes some sources say amin khalif was born a biological woman i stand by my sentiment <laughs> the women's tag team champion seemingly showed disdain for Paul. Shocking. Isla Dawn saying, baffled by the constantly moving goalposts for woman, womanhood. Just say you have zero media literacy and keep your transphobic opinions to yourself. Have a good day. Dawn went on to say her post wasn't aimed at anyone in particular, but given its timing, it's hard not to believe the post was about Logan Paul. As soon as this smear campaign started, it was essentially rendered, or what should have been rendered, null and void, completely dead on arrival by people who actually did the research, who actually knew about the chromosomes, who actually talked about the IBA and why it wasn't a trustworthy source for this. That has not stopped people like the quartering, people who have a vested interest in spreading as much controversy and conspiracy and bullshit in a tiny amount of time as possible from capitalizing on this moment. 
including from the quartering particularly. Look, I'll be real with y'all. Jeremy has never been what I would call smart in any considerable shade. Um, this might be some of the dumbest shit he said. Like, straight up, with without reservation. Where his evidence for... I don't understand. It, it's it's a lot. You see a lot of the similar things in spaces with gender criticals and just these dumb, like dweebs, um, where they spend so long. Purportedly, people like libs of TikTok, J.K. Rowling, spend so long spreading fears, stoking fears, spreading conspiracies and wild, crazy stories about trans people. Yet they don't know like just the the most basic aspects of trans presentation, of trans healthcare. For example, um, no trans woman on a world stage in a combat sport, just, just hypothetically here, would be untucked. MMA fighters typically, yeah, that's what I was going to say. MMA fighters typically wear compression shorts or short liners underneath their fight shorts. Compression shorts provide support and help reduce the risk of injury during the intense grappling and striking maneuvers. Tight fit of compression shorts helps keep the fighter's muscles and genitals secure and protected during the fight. So that's, that is what I would assume, and it turns out my assumption was correct, that male boxers would wear. Um, and somebody, Andromeda31 on in the chat saying, my partner is a boxer, he has to wear a guard. Comple like, makes total sense. You you got you got people swinging, who like put all of their work into swinging. You would you would have a cup. You would have a shell, right? Now, you may notice that's that's not really either of these folks. Like I feel like that's something you'd be able to to kind of tell. But even if you couldn't tell, it wouldn't just be hanging here, Jeremy. Like, be so dumb. It's, it's, a, it's a wrinkle because as you can see, her leg is slightly lifted forward so the fabric is wrinkled. It took, it takes two seconds of brain power. This is this is the the ideological competition we face, folks. Like how I just deeply unserious people. Everybody. So here's here's the true mind-boggling aspect of this. Is like I said, almost immediately after this story broke. Of course, everybody in the conservative sphere, from Matt Walsh to the quartering, J.K. Rowling, every B, C, D tier conservative asshole that you're constantly seeing in your fucking Twitter feed now because Elon likes and shares them all jumped on this. Mind you, all these people who did not do a fucking just a smidgen of research, like we've already talked about Algeria being a very anti LGBT country, um, did not, did not look into it even the slightest bit, but so many people immediately overwhelmed them with facts, disproving them verifiable facts disproving the narrative they were pushing. And instead of hardly any of them issuing retractions like the Boston Globe did, because it's supposed to be a news organization, like Logan Paul did kind of barely, even though he doubled down on the transphobia, they've mostly done what the quartering did here. Some of them have stopped posting about it. Like they'll just kind of quietly sweep that under the rug. But most of them just ignored the criticism and continued to say that this cis woman who was born a woman, has lived as a woman her entire life, is in fact a big, scary, lumbering man who's just ready to fight women and beat up on women. Like, the amount of people I've seen say that they would fight her. Like, the amount of men... Ooh, let me see if I can find it real quick. Alex Jones had to say, 
And Alex Jones, for, for anybody who's, who's listening to his stuff, Alex Jones is a unhinged weirdo. The, the thing you learn from listening to a lot of Knowledge Fight is that Alex Jones has incredibly violent fantasies that he is so eager to live out. And he'll say, well, I'm, I'm not a, a, a violent person. And we, we, don't want, we don't want violence, of course. But at his core, he is an incredibly violent, hateful person. Alex is still lying. I mean, Alex Jones is still breathing, so yeah. I uh, thought he was sued to oblivion. You know, oddly, oddly enough, doesn't stop a bullshitter. Yeah. Red Onion 777. I'll never forget Alex Jones eagerly talking about how he'll eat his neighbors. Yeah. Um, so listening to this, I do want to give a brief um, content warning. Because this is like violently misogynistic. Again, by the time Alex said this, we knew it had been confirmed that Khalif is a woman and has always been a woman. National TV, snarling at her celebrating and then proudly getting a gold medal. <laughs> I mean, I'm laughing because I'm not, I don't want to cry here. The Olympics is a total joke. Look at this guy's face as he punches a woman in the face. That is such a monster right there. And these perverts and these sickos, some want to beat women, some want to rape women. They're everywhere, and they're full on in the government, the Pentagon, other governments. They're just everywhere. It's a damn cult. And, and I differentiate. You know, if some man wants to be a woman, and they're a nice person, and they're not politically actively trying to go out and convince kids to do it and bullshit and, and bullshit. try to beat women up, then I'm like, hey, live your life. I'm not your enemy. I don't hate bullshit. those people. Bullshit. Bullshit. I mean, people have a right with their own bodies to do what they want, but you do not have a right to take over women's sports and come in women's bathrooms because you're a predator. I mean, imagine, he's a psycho predator. Imagine out of eight and a half I'm million people, my water. they've gotten enough men that want to go take over cycling and swimming and wrestling and boxing and weightlifting. And I said this would happen a decade ago when this started. I said, soon, no biological women will be winning anything. I mean, look at that lunatic, look at his face. And imagine being the trainers and the people that are part of this and involved in all this. So it is a cult of sicko. Uh, important to note there. Um, there are no trans women in the Olympics. They aren't just like sweeping everything. Like we, we've talked about it before. Their trans women have won events, but a lot of them also lose a lot of events against cis women competitors. It actually kind of breaks even overall. The reason you don't hear about that is because that doesn't fit the conservative narrative that they're all, they're just blowing everybody out of the water and they're, they're coming into women's spaces and they're, they're taking over all these women's spaces, these things that nobody gave a crap about before. And let's talk about what's happening there because if the social engineers can get us to believe two plus two equals seven, like 1984, or, or that two men can have a baby or that in boxing and the Olympics that a biological male can literally beat the living hell out of a woman and that the woman is a sore sport because she quit after 49 seconds of having her head beat in, we will put up with anything. But it's an anti-woman, anti-child, anti-God, anti-family, anti-human pedo cult that BlackRock through its ESG is funding worldwide. So you wonder why everything from Tractor Supply to Disney, to Harley <laughs> Davidson to Anheuser-Busch promotes this stuff. It's because Black... Now... Really quick, uh, just because he brought up BlackRock, and I've been doing research on BlackRock all fucking day to disprove a conspiracy in the Synthetic Man video. So this is like an activation phrase for me about now. Nobody who says BlackRock controls shit has an idea of what BlackRock actually fucking does. They're an investment firm that manages portfolios. They have a shit ton of money because it's not their money. People pay them to invest their money into other stocks that are going to make profits. When BlackRock a couple years ago took on a couple of ESG initiatives, it was to help people diversify their portfolios.
Because at the time, BlackRock was looking at market trends going towards diversity, ESG, in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement. And they said to themselves, huh, people will probably want to invest more if we say, hey, this is going to a good cause. So they started taking on those initiatives. Now, that's not to say BlackRock doesn't have uh, interests in large companies. But the other thing people will tell you is that BlackRock has a controlling interest or BlackRock owns Microsoft and Apple. They, they also do not. They have percentages of shares. They have like 8% of shares in Microsoft. And you might say, holy shit, that sounds like a lot for one company. It is. However, again, BlackRock doesn't technically really own those. It manages those shares for its investors. It is a investment company. That is what it does. However, because of that, they also, because they have such large shares, uh, roughly, right? Like for, for individual companies to have 8%, 9% of a, a massive company's shares, that does give them kind of an outsized influence when it comes to voting on things and measures. So they might vote in favor of measures like DEI or something at those companies. But the idea that this one evil cabal is, is pushing DEI and pushing fucking transgenderism is completely, like it is so, it's so ridiculous. And the only people who like believe it or share it, share that conspiracy, are people who just like literally can't process the reality of what's really happening or, or won't even take a second to do research. BlackRock is also, here's the other thing, they're a publicly traded company. Legally, they have to constantly disclose all of their SEC filings. You can go right now, you can look up BlackRock SEC filings and find all of their fucking paperwork online publicly right now. That's the big, big puppet master. Ooh. Like, are you fucking kidding? That's the worst master plan in the world. They're giving you the schematics. Are you kidding? Get me the fuck out of here. Ugh. Dumb asses. Disgusting. Women need to boycott all this. We all need to boycott this. We need to know anything else about the Olympics. It's this right here. They even got him adjusting his junk. <laughs> That's not... God. That's a dude. It looks a mean dude. All snarling. That, then... that is not... Sorry, adjusting, adjusting the hem of your shorts is not at all the same as adjusting your junk, dude. Like what? Like, I don't, I really don't understand it when people say something, but then they're actually showing something that disproves them. It's like the Blair White video all over again. It's like, are you, do you think people are just blind and stupid? I mean, I guess, I guess they are, because I had a lot of people on that Blair White video saying like, oh, they, they, they don't show any of the stuff you say. And I'm like, dog, I, I literally show Blair White showing the stuff. Like, what? You know, I'm out of shot so fast, I'll make his head spin. I'll break my hand on his ugly head. Son of a bitch. Piece of shit. Absolute disgusting cockroach. Go ahead and play the 46 second fight. Here it is. We got some slowdowns of it I sent you guys. And then look. Look, a dude, he's actually proud that he beat up a girl. Oh, these people are sick. Look at that. Boom. Punches her right in the mouth. I mean, look at it. <laughs> look how sick he looks. Back it up five, three seconds. Look at the evil look on his face. Go, go frame for frame. Look at this smile right here. Roll, roll, roll through frame by frame. I want to show his smile. T-pose. Look at that face. Hit pause. Ooh, that face would get me going right there, man. I got in the ring with that guy. Oh, my goodness. Look at that face. A predator beating up women on international television. And he's proud of himself. He gets to go to the Olympics, beat up women for the qualifiers, get in the ring and beat up a woman and then get a gold medal. And I know I sent you the tape. So a couple of things. Um, Khalif has not won the gold medal. Not yet. Uh, in fact, this was not a medal fight. She, she has not. I believe she did place for bronze at this point. And I think there are still more fights to come. But as of now, she has not gotten a gold medal, right? Second thing, this violent fantasy that he's talking about, 
of bashing uh, his jaw in and then knocking his jaw clean off and breaking his hand on her head. He is not talking about a man. He's talking about a woman. Conservatives don't actually care. Though. Like, that. that is what this narrative, more than anything they've done recently, shows. They don't care. It, it's, it shouldn't be surprising after, after everything with Trump, after everything with Trump, that they continue to value feelings over facts. But they truly do not care, especially when it comes to things like women. And they, as they continue to show, if, if everything with Roe v. Wade didn't already tell you that, everything with denying even cases of incest or assault didn't already tell you that, then let this case of a cis woman Someone who was born a woman, who hails from a country where being trans and gay is illegal. Yet they would rather say that she is a man. They would rather have elaborate, violent fantasies about beating her up and breaking her bones. Because they would rather have some kind of wedge issue to shove the trans debate in somewhere it is not applicable than to just shut up and watch the fucking Olympics.